Welcome back everybody, and this is PS Power is Among 2, the sequel, Secret of the Ooze. Um, I'm going to make an effort to make this my last PS Power video, but as everyone knows, he makes terrible videos. So it's going to be hard for me to kind of resist. Um, here's the thing. With this second part of his video, the first part I'll put in the description, the second part of his video, I don't entirely disagree with. I disagree with a lot he, he says and how he presents his argument, but I don't disagree with a lot of what he says in principle. It's just he constructs a poor argument and directly contradicts things he said in the first part of the video. Let's get on with it. I think everyone got the point of it the second time you made the whole WWF then and WWE now joke. And besides, you're talking about TNA in this video. Well, this part of the video. So, what? Oh, whatever. In recent times, Eric Bischoff's on-screen character, named Eric Bischoff, has feuded with the X Division. Eric Bischoff has dismissed the X Division as nothing but crap. I'm here to say, I agree. It is crap. You know, sometimes when watching your videos, I wonder if you can tell the difference between reality and fiction. Uh, this just makes me question it just that little bit more. Um, whatever, we'll just keep going. Because in my opinion, not only does the X-Division seem to carry very limited appeal beyond the fanboys... Yeah, because you know, you don't want to do anything that appeals to your die-hard fan base. You know, that's just absurd. It's also arguably causing as much damage to wrestling as the WWE PG era is. I have two points to support this opinion. First of all, the X Division title has no place in TNA. Let's look at some other promotions. In the UFC... The UFC, a legitimate sporting organization. Alright, continue. It's divided into weight classes. To be the number one guy, you qualify for a weight class and beat the champion. Simple as that. Well, actually, it's not that simple, but okay, continue. In the WWF, you had your world title, who's the number one guy, and then you had the Intercontinental title, who's pretty much the number two guy. Wrestlers climbed the ladder through the Intercontinental title to the world title. It was very clear. Simple as that. The frameworks for these titles were very clear. Okay, you used the weight class example. Okay, I was following you. That was fair enough. Then the Intercontinental title and the World title, and the Intercontinental Champion is the number two guy, and it's the step up to go to the World title. All right, that's how it's being booked. Yes. Continue. Now, what the hell is the X Division? Where does it belong? TNA likes to say it's not about weight classes, it's about attitude. Attitude? What the hell does that mean? Okay, now that I'm done processing your bullshit, you're saying the X Division doesn't have a place in TNA, and you're criticizing it, right? Saying it doesn't have a place, but your argument against it is the actual booking of the title. While I agree the X Division title is booked poorly, and should be booked more like the Intercontinental title, say, and give you know young up-and-comers a chance, the, the problem is booking not the actual division itself. What it means, what they're trying to communicate, is that it's going to be one of those over-coordinated ballerina matches. Yeah, those ballerina matches that fans actually seem to enjoy. Alright. But think about it for a second. If wrestling was real, how the hell does a promotion know what type of match it's going to be? You know, that same logic could be applied to the Intercontinental title. Who can go for the Intercontinental title and who can't? I mean, they're always wrestling pretty much in the United States. Nearly all their pay-per-views are. So why can't people, you know, anybody win the Inter What is the Intercontinental title? What does it represent? You know, it's the same logic. And the whole thing with professional wrestling is it isn't real. You can do these things that mixed martial arts can't, and other legitimate sporting organizations can't do. You can create titles that appeal to specific tastes in wrestling and that's an asset not a detriment because then fans know what they're going to be getting into fans naturally like one style over another a lot of the time 
And this is, you know, a case where you can showcase a certain type of style. You know... The only way a promotion can predict what type of match it's going to be is if the wrestlers agree to wrestle that type of match beforehand because wrestling's fake. You're advertising that wrestling's fake. Yeah, because wrestling is fake. We're not, it's not the kayfabe era, era anymore. In fact, your favorite era, the Attitude Era, one of the you know, key things that define the Attitude Era was the breaking kayfabe, was saying, yeah, it's fake, in you know, many ways. You know, fans, everybody knows wrestling's fake. You're not fooling anybody anymore. They know, the jig is up. It's fiction, but people still enjoy fiction. It's just fiction. That happens in a ring in the context of it's sport, but it, you can still do things with it that you can't do in actual sports like M, you know MMA or what have you. A promotion should base its titles off weight classes and or hierarchy. That's it. Except there's flaws with both those. When you go with weight classes, what are you going to have? Heavyweight, light heavyweight, or cruiserweight, or junior heavyweight? You're already they're, they're going to it, you know, you, you're relegating certain half, half of your roster into a certain division anyway. And with the hierarchy thing, um, you know, you're already saying this title is inferior to that title. Um, and so nobody's going to care about the sec second tier title, especially if the booking is, is as poor as TNA's booking. You can't base a title off a type of match. It's like having a high flyers title or a brawler's title or a technical wrestler's title. Or the, you know, hardcore title in the WWF Attitude Era. Um, or the ROH Pure title, which was a different set of rules. If wrestling's real, you can't predict what kind of attitude the match is going to have. That's because wrestling isn't real. Okay? It's not real. It's fiction. You can do things with fiction that you can't do with reality. What if a high flyer decides he's going to keep it on the ground this match? What if a brawler decides to go airborne? You can't predict! Having a title based off a type of match is basically a huge flashing sign saying, We're fake! We're fake! The existence of the X Division title kills believability and breaks suspension of disbelief. Except, realism isn't on Teenage's agenda. It clearly hasn't been for the last four years where they've been booking things like they're a bunch of fucking retards. And hasn't Teenage just done an angle kind of relating to that, with, you know, with Abyss? Winning the X Division title? Second of all, I question the value of all these ballerina matches. I mean, yeah, you got some matches like the Austin Aries match at Destination X, which I well thought was fantastic, but then you have all these other ones, like Sabin versus Shelly, where they're hopping and skipping and swinging, and it looks like they're figure skating. Disney on ice. You know, I almost expected Sabin to lift Shelly up as they skate by the crowd. This is wrestling. This is wrestling. You don't you want your matches to actually look like fights? If I wanted my matches to look like fights, I would pretty much devote myself to mixed martial arts. The reason why I watch wrestling is different from the reason why I watch mixed martial arts. Uh, and you know, the fans who chant, this is wrestling, they gotta be wrong, don't they? They have to be, you know, what they actually want and what they enjoy is irrelevant to what you want and what you enjoy. Okay. But I will agree with you in part, because I do feel a lot of X Division matches do come off as, you know, seeming a bit overly choreographed. But it's still enjoyable for what it is. I mean, we talk about how the WWE has moved too far away from wrestling, but when an X Division match crosses the line into looking blatantly fake, doesn't that compromise wrestling as well? I don't know, it might, but the fans seem to enjoy it. And isn't that what's important? Appealing to the actual fans and not the people who aren't fans because it might look fake? Alright, let's get something straight. Back in the day, you had guys like Shawn Michaels, the Macho Man, Ricky Steen. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, what are you doing here, man? Generation me. Go, go away, man. Oh. Hey, you P.S. Bauer. You gonna listen to me, because I am the future of DNA. And as the future of DNA, I do not appreciate you calling CM Punk scrawny, right? See, you're just living in the past, man. People today, they don't want their wrestlers to look strong. 
They want their wrestlers to look like me. Look right here. Face it, live with it. This right here is the new look of professional wrestling. So what do you have to say about that? Get out of here! <laughs> Stupid cartwheeling cabbage patch kid. Whew. Where was I? Oh yeah, high flying matches. Let's get something straight, alright? The X Division does not define high flying matches. You had guys like Shawn Michaels, the Macho Man, Ricky Steamboat, and RVD that were tearing it up before there even was an X Division. And they were doing it in these badass matches that I would take over the X Division any day. Continue. I remember when Shawn Michaels was going to fight the British Bulldog on Raw. I was so excited for that match that I thought about it all day, couldn't sleep that night, then thought about it all day in school the next day all the way up until the show. Why? Did it have anything to do with you being like six or seven or eight years old? I mean, that might play a part. Why? Because I knew it was going to be this badass, high-flying, high-impact match featuring two of the biggest stars in professional wrestling. Think about this. You were excited about the match because you knew what you were going to be getting. The X Division is the exact same thing. It is telling fans, this is an X Division match. This is what you'll be getting. You're arguing against it, and then you make an argument within your argument against it. FOR IT! Why do we need this ballerina figure skating crap when we had guys like the British Bulldog, who unlike CM Punk, was this huge guy, but was like doing flips in the ring in combination with high impact power slams? Wouldn't you rather have your matches with people like that? Wouldn't you rather have matches that actually look like legitimate fights? Now you're just all over the fucking place. I can't even remember the last time I saw a big bulky guy the size of the British Bulldog doing flips in a fucking real legitimate fight. When has that happened? When? When? Christ! The X Division has talent. It's got guys like Kazarian and Austin Aries. But why relegate them to some stupid division? Why not just have them in the regular division, like Shawn Michaels and the British Bulldog? Here's why. First of all, CM Punk is way too scrawny to be in the heavyweight division. Instead of Austin Aries versus some ballerina chasing some big plastic X, why not Austin Aries versus Kurt Angle chasing the world title just like everybody else? When me and my friend went to Saturday night's main event and CM Punk walked out with the heavyweight title, my friend was in shock. He was like, that shrimp is the heavyweight champion? Doesn't that sound better? Eliminate the X division, cut the ballerina crap, extract the talent, and put him in the regular division. <clears throat> so what? So you can complain about those guys being too small to be in the heavyweight division like you did with CM Punk? Do you just change your opinion on a minute by minute basis? I mean, this, this, people, just so you know, these weren't two different videos. These were the same video. The, he, the CM Punk and the X Vision rant were the same thing. They were in the same video. He did, he completely flipped, his opinion changes to the exact opposite for TNA than it does for WWE. It proves to me he doesn't like anything. Well, maybe he does like things. But he only likes things before he came onto the internet. He just hates everything that, you know, us wrestling fans, other wrestling fans besides himself, like. He has to shit on everyone's parade. If you were to give him a million dollars, he would complain about the tax that he had to pay on it. If, if you were to say, hey, this supermodel wants to go out with you, he'd probably complain that she might have an STD and he might catch it, or that she'd end up fat and ugly when she got older. He finds the negative in anything. He's a negative individual. Why do so many people listen to him? Fucking beyond me because he can't keep to his own goddamn. He can't. He can't stay consistent with his own opinions. The, my videos weren't really me arguing with him. It's me trying to show people he can't. He, he, he's he's fucking stupid. He's stupid, people. Why are you listening to him?